The footy club has been a very big part of Clunes. The town itself is a little tight-knit community, which has actually been uh, really supportive of the club in the last few years. My connection with the footy club has come back from childhood, basically. When I was uh, living on the streets a little bit, an old bloke basically found me climbing out from underneath the bridge one day and brought me down to the club to mark the lines. Laurie took me under his wing and told me to forget about all the negatives and just concentrate on all the positives. Definitely a father figure for me, yeah. Club's been huge for me since I've been out here and made some friends that I can call friends for life, you know, like some of my best mates, you know, I've met through this club. There's just great people around here. I started marking the lines there when I was 13. I still mark lines now and I'm 57. You get away from the farm, you sort of get to have a bit of a laugh, keep fit and enjoy it. It's the one day of the week that most people want to not go to work, they want to come to footy. I was never a very good footballer, but uh, I had this love for the club and that feeling of connection and basically uh, I turned out to be my second family. So the club's been here a long time and the town's obviously steeped in history. You've got to only walk down the main street to see that. Massive connection to the Gold Rush but also the farming community around the football club. Without the footy club in this community, it, it, was, it would struggle. There's so much that comes out of the footy club. We give back but they also give back to us as well. You're in a good place or a bad place, you know, there's always someone reaching out to see who you are and what's going on and if they can help in any way. I know firsthand how it feels. Um, my dad passed away from MND and the support that we got from the footy club uh, was just next level black, yeah. yeah. So we're potato farmers, partner and I, Farming can be really tough. The weather and just so much stuff is out of your control, so it's nice to be able to get the footy on a Thursday night and just let your hair down a little bit, just have a kick, have a run around, and it takes the pressure off a little bit because you probably find otherwise you're seven days a week, all hours of the day, you never get that time to switch off. Look, it's been a huge week here in Clunes for WorkSafe. Um, on Tuesday night we had Salt um, talking about mental health. We've had Tom Boyd here. To have Tom Boyd here, and I think we had 40 people at training, like it was just electrifying. Uh, we've had Emily and Kate from the Vixens really getting into it with the local community, doing training, but more importantly, talking about making sure that everyone stays safe at work. So on a Saturday, you can come and play football or netball. You can be with those you love. That's what work safe and keeping people safe at work is really all about. <laughs> And then he proceeded to not take a single mark for the next 10 minutes. <laughs>I've lived in a few places in country Victoria um, and I've never seen a setup like this in terms of the, the community centre over there. Uh, we don't really have club rooms, we, we have to set up club rooms for every home game, set up and pack up. I mean, that's because the centre is used for other things during the week. It doesn't feel like a proper football netball club. We've got a lot of memorabilia sitting just in storage, you know, like we'd love to be showing but unfortunately we can't. It's a massive part of our lives. We're probably, with what we have to do off the field, setting up here, we're probably here every second day of the week, sometimes too long. When it's a big job on a Sunday morning when people have had a big day at the football to then come in and pack up, but if you don't do it then, Monday night netball can't happen. But we've got so many volunteers, which is great, and we've got a great vibe around the club with people putting in and having a crack. In 2010, I became president the first time. We had the floods here, which was coincide with me becoming president. So I actually took a year off work when the floods come through and put all my, basically all my life back into this club and spent the whole year making sure the club got back on its feet so we could play home games the year after. We've got a creek here. We're, we're the lowest part of the ground. We're on a floodplain here. Last November, we sort of agreed that we'd investigate the relocation of the ground, which is a massive step. We've started that process now and we're um, working with the Hepburn Shire Council to say let's have a look at this and see if it's possible to find a better site And because the place here has been flooded now three times. It's not one in a hundred years, it's three in the last sort of, um, you know, 13, so it's um, pretty regular. A new facility would be, would be huge for the whole community. we can have a legacy one day that's a new complex and new facilities that our kids and the next generations after that get to enjoy, then um, that's pretty important to us. Great work in there. Just the boys playing out here now and you know, I just hope that they can go through and have the same opportunities I have to meet some great people and make some friends for life.
You know, a few years ago, I became made the sponsor of the club, and that was huge for me. I had my own painting business, and you know, even that was struggling a little bit. So I actually remortgaged my house to become sponsor for one year, which turned to two years and three years. Uh, a big thanks to Bangalore, well done. Yeah, it was an amazing feeling to have my name on all the apparel in the footy club. It was incredible. And saying that you're paying it back, I, yeah, I'm not paying it back. What I'm trying to do is still prove to them that I am the person that Laurie left. I'd do anything for this club because they did it all for me.